Hi everyone, Jeannie here with Belly Beads, here today to bring you a tutorial of a throwback from the 90s, a material that I used often, and that is wallpaper. I used this material so much, I created jewelry out of it, and I loved working with it. I used to attend the craft shows, and the earrings and the bracelets came out beautiful. And I loved working with it because, if you notice, it has like a satiny, if you know wallpaper, of course, it's all satiny, and it actually feels like it's embossed. And it did allow me to create some awesome jewelry. And I just love the patterns. You can obtain any of these uh, wallpaper sample books from any wallpaper store and they throw them away anyway so you're recycling and all you have to do is go in and ask them and they will definitely give them to you they'll be happy to give them to you because they have to throw them out anyway so I decided to just revisit with it a little bit and I actually earned a nickname they used to call me wallpaper girl so when I was at a craft show recently, someone yelled out, Wallpaper Girl, and it was just so funny. It just brought me back in time. And I thought, let me try to incorporate this into my new style with um, just solid color paper. Now, if you haven't visited my website, it's uh, bellybeads.com. I'll put the link below. I sell paper strips, uh, all sizes, colors, patterns. And this is the first I'm using uh, just the solid colors. And this is a 65 pound paper, and I say that because it's very important. If you're gonna obtain measurements, you must know what the paper uh, you cut with, because if you're using thinner paper, it won't work. It'll just be a little bit thinner. So make sure that you also know the weight of the paper that you are working with. If you're not sure, you can go back to one of my other videos. I have it all about the weights and sizes of paper, which is really important. It's almost like a, you have to be a scientist. All right, so let's get started here. These are 16 millimeter barrels. And I will actually, to let you know where I purchased this from, it was um, just at the online. You can get these at the local store too. Any Hobby Lobby or any craft store and they are smooth they're not textured and i did notice though this color was a little bit different than these the feel of it and the way it rolled so i'm not quite sure perhaps maybe it was the dye that they used for this but these seem to go a little bit smoother but i will work with this one because this is one of my favorite colors what i'm going to be working with uh, the wallpaper and i will roll this in front of you i'm using a 332nd paper bead roller. I purchased this from JP Fun. I love her rollers. They're really smooth and they're easy to work with. And we're going to work with wallpaper. Now I cut these out precisely with my Cricut cutter. I have quite a few of them because I have a business cutting paper. And these are little shapes and I call them covers. Now we've seen barrels covered before but I thought let me incorporate the wallpaper into these covers and when you purchase them you do get quite an, a bit of them and the reason for that is because the patterns are cut out or when they're cut out the patterns wind up in all different shapes so I thought it would be nice for you to have a variety of which ones you would like to use on your barrels okay and a lot of these um, also are maybe perhaps a little bit different shape because we all roll our our paper differently you must roll them this particular barrel a little tighter because these uh, covers are cut exactly around the um, the barrel so let's get started always condition your paper and when I say condition your paper it's just running your fingers through it don't run it through um, hard or fast or rough because then your paper will split. But you want to make sure you soften up the paper. Uh, there's nothing like rolling a paper and you get this big crease and this bump in there. So you want to make sure that it curls just like this. You can use your paper bead roller if you like. and But just again, be careful. Don't press too hard because it may split. You want to go ahead and make sure I'm in the camera there. Okay, 
and roll. And when you roll, make sure you tug a little harder than you normally do so it's taut. All right, there we go. And when I get to the very end, make sure that your ends are very, let's see, yeah, they're even. You wanna make sure they're always even. And if they're not, you just wanna punch them in a little bit or pinch them in a little bit. I use Elmer's clear glue. It looks like my glue's running out. You can use any kind of glue. I, yeah, You just practice with each one. Now this is 65 pound paper. You want to make sure that you keep your finger on that a little bit longer than you would a normal thinner paper. The glue, if you notice in all my tutorials, I'm very generous with. I place it all around the entire bead. It actually prepares it and keeps it nice and tight and safe. It prepares it for glazing. I'm going to give that a few more seconds and then I'm going to wrap the cover around it, which is quite awesome. All right, I'm going to put this down for just a moment. And here, I usually begin at the, where I ended at is where I begin with. Now with the wallpaper strip, the cover, you want to soften this up too a little bit. Not too much, like I said, just make sure that it's soft enough to wrap around. Now remember, when you're working with wallpaper, there is a material on there this might split open, so you don't want to be too rough with it. Okay, and then be mindful that when you're working with this wallpaper, there is a material on the back of it that is actually, um, you, you need to use a good glue. Now again, like I said, this Elmer's is fine, but you want to make sure because when you're hanging wallpaper, there is a particular paste that they use that sticks. So if your wallpaper is not sticking, just try a different glue. Like I said, this Elmer's clear one, it's working for me. And then if you notice, you want to make sure, see how they're precisely cut? There's no gaps. That's why I had mentioned about using this size roller and wrapping it quite tightly. <laughs> now I am cutting more strips that are gonna overlap because I know a lot of you, I'm sure, will not you know, roll the way we all do. So I'm giving you the advantage you can cut it yourself. But there we go, there is, I love this. Look at that. So there you have a wallpaper cover. Now let me show you some of the other covers that are really pretty too. And I was a little concerned because it had, like I mentioned, it looks like it's a little sponge. I don't know if you, the camera can pick that up. It's It looks like there's a little raised material. So now you're thinking, is this gonna glaze? And of course, I would never do anything without experimenting first, and it does. Now this is like an orange color. This went really well with the orange paper. Oh, it looks like, let me grab that one more time. I didn't hold my finger tight enough on there. You gotta hold it on there. That's the orange. And then I have these colors. This is really pretty. Look at the way this wallpaper came out. Isn't that pretty? All right, I want to show you the finished. The finished one. And they are still on the string. When I dipped, and here are the finished pieces. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut this open so you can actually see it. But before I do, I want to show you that I, what I used to dip them. PC Petrifier, okay? This is the PC Petrifier. I dip it once. You can dip more than once if you'd like, but I just dip once. And then I use my polycrylic. This comes in clear satin, it comes in high gloss, whatever you like. But I don't dip it in the polycrylic. I actually brush it on. And when I say brush it on, I'm not talking about one by one. These little loops that I've created on the string, I attach it to a hook and 
I just make this a little bit more tighter and I brush it on. I brush on the polycrylic, which makes it so much easier because then I can get into the little cracks and crevices, which is really kind of cool. So that is one of them. And here's another one. And I usually try to, I use little clips sometimes to hold on to it. Now this is the paper we're talking about right here. This is the wallpaper and this is how it comes already glaze. So you still obtain that feeling of the embossed look and it didn't melt it or anything. Here's another one. These are really pretty. I love the idea of not having to paint the ends because I was always one. I like the white core sometimes, but sometimes I like to achieve a color on the, the ends. And the colored paper, solid colored paper, allows me to obtain the color, the core. Here's another one. Isn't that pretty? So this is all wallpaper. Let me uh, let me cut this. Cut this piece and show you up close. A little bit better there and this oh I actually have the strips the covers for these and that is these are it so these covers were on here which is quite awesome so there you go you can use the wallpaper for just about every anything and everything all right, now this is part one. I'm gonna bring part two and bring you a different size um, barrel. So stay tuned for part two. If you like this video, please subscribe, click on the bell so you can watch, uh, be notified of upcoming videos and please uh, share this if you like. Thank you very much for everyone's support and have fun.